Our project is on Jay Z, and we are Team Amazing. Myself, my name is Ho. Oh, H to the O V. I used to move snowflakes by the O Z. My name's Olivia McConnell, and I'm Jesse Martin, and we did the uh, motivational part of what drives Jay-Z as a professional business. So one big part of motivation is um, what drives Jay-Z intrinsically. Um, one part of in Jay-Z's intrinsic motivation is that uh, he doesn't limit himself to the music industry. He's branched out into various markets including the sports market as well as clothing in Rock Aware as, and his sports label which is Rock Nation Sports. Um, He's acquired entrepreneurial skills throughout his career that have helped enhance not only his music career, but by means of these other, like I said, sports as well as clothes. For extrinsic motivations of Jay-Z, he's obviously motivated, you know, by the cars, the clothes, the lifestyle. Who wouldn't be? But um, it's the social status that goes along with extrinsic motivation that really motivates Jay-Z. Um, as he grows in social status, he um, acquires more higher up business partners, individuals that he meets that are, you know, can help him with his business endeavors. One of his powerful connections is Barack Obama. Uh, I mean, the sky's the limit if you have the president as an ally. Um, so extrinsically, social status as Jay-Z grows, it's these connections that help him uh, prepare for his strategic business planning. So one of the motivational theories that strongly applies to what Jay-Z does in the industry is the three needs theory. Um, it encompasses achievement, affiliation, and power. So with achievement, Jay-Z has been nominated for over 50 music awards. Um, he's produced over 100 songs, 15 studio albums. He's the co-founder of the fashion brand Rock Aware, as Jesse mentioned, and he was named the number two highest earning hip-hop artist by Forbes magazine um, in this past year. So yes, that speaks a lot to his achievements Indeed as an does. artist. Indeed it does. Um, Jay-Z values long-lasting, close, fulfilling personal and professional relationships. So he and his wife, Beyonce, they like to keep their relationship a little bit quieter, which is different um, than most celebrities, and they think that it allows for them to have a more genuine relationship, and I think that that really speaks to how he likes to keep his relationships um, true rather than having them publicized. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from his personal relationships, he also likes to build strong professional relationships. Um, he's been credited to building like very, very strong friendships with many of the artists that he's collaborated with, such as Justin Timberlake, Kanye West, P. Diddy, and actually Chris Martin from Coldplay. Um, so All successful individuals. Very. So and surround yourself with success. Yeah, surround yourself with success and you too will be successful. Yes, you will. Jay-Z strives to always be at the top of his game. Um, his powerful, meaningful song lyrics, along with his influential public image, make him a strong leader in the music industry as well as many other industries. Um, the fan following that he has uh, cultivated over the years and years of performing, um, they have been very loyal and feel like they can connect with him because his lyrics are true to who he is. Growing up, he was not very well off, but he has made himself a ruling household name. So for self-efficiency, Jay-Z has been known to have many, many, many very influential, very powerful quotes, um, two of which we have up here. One says, remind yourself, nobody built like you, and you design yourself. That's Thank actually you. from the song lyric, um, from the song A Dream by Jay-Z. And then the one in the corner, he says, I believe excellence is being able to perform to the highest level over and over again. And that's definitely true, and that's definitely been proven that Jay-Z really, really uses that. Um, so, self-efficiency is the degree to which a person believes that he or she is capable of performing a behavior, accomplishing a task, or achieving a goal. Jay-Z credits much of his success to his high level of self-efficiency. He has always believed in himself, either, even when others didn't. These quotes by Jay-Z emphasize the fact that he believes he is responsible for his great success and that he gives his all at all times in order to be the best that he can be. All the time. All the time. Um, another quote by Jay-Z is, he quotes, um, you're the product. I mean, don't take me, this isn't precisely what it is, but you're the product and what you're selling, if people buy into you, 
then they're going to buy into whatever you're portraying to them. So people believe in Jay-Z, they believe what he's about. Right. So granted, whatever he's going to produce, whether it's songs or music or clothes, people are going to buy into it because they buy into him as a person and what he's pitching. Yeah. And that's ultimately why Jay-Z will you know, be around in the long run and continue to be a relevant individual in the music as well as clothing and sports industry. Sky's Especially if he keeps inspiring other people to follow in his footsteps to always believe in what they want to do. Um, Absolutely. He's always been a true inspiration for many of his followers, which is important. My name is Mark Massey and I'll be arguing Jay-Z's uh, flaws. The most obvious thing people point out will be his age and that he's very old. As a rapper, he's remained relevant more than any other rapper. I mean, his first album came out in 96, and that was during the gangster era. And now 2013, everything is like pop, EDM, radio, music, and he's still able to sell records. Business-wise, he's only grown with experience. So when he first started off, he might not have known what he was getting into. But as far as now, he's a little bit more refined, and he goes into markets that he knows. So like when he started Rockefeller Records, he was already a rapper at that time. So that's something that he knows and he's able to do. He doesn't go outside of his boundaries. And if he does, he slowly gets involved into it. Another thing is people point out he has no formal education. He never went to college or business school. And despite that, he's still able to succeed in business and in music as well. Um, Education-wise, he's able to dive into different areas. And all his money is not coming from one record deal or from one endorsement like uh, Dr. Dre and Diddy. They only have money from one business. He's able to go to different businesses and make money off a lot of different things instead of just one simple idea. And his drug dealing past, a lot of people, a lot of rappers in general, always talk about how they used to drug deal and they glorify it. But as far as Jay-Z, he likes to keep his private life private and away from paparazzi or from tabloids. So he doesn't really glorify the drug culture anymore, but he does say that was from it and even now he's able to move past that and evolve and even have connections with Obama so he doesn't stay the same person he's always evolving and changing so he doesn't let his past or his setbacks define him all of his failures don't define him he's known for succeeding in life welcome ladies and gentlemen to the eighth wonder of the world hi I'm Mike Nally and I'm Andrew Melville and we have done the project on JC and we are working on the organization aspect and the first slide is about Jay-Z's for-profit organization, Rock Nation. It acts as a flat organization with cross-functional teams, working with various songwriters, producers, DJs, to create a product that is considered releasable. Rock Nation Sports offers a unique sports agency with the organization acting as a brand, and the kind of brand recognition that will attract top players. Jay-Z has also officially been approved as an agent in the MLB and NBA. The Sean Carter Foundation has been a public charity type organization since 2000, 2003 through 501c3. It was set up by Jay-Z and his mother, Gloria Carter, in order to provide assistance to other students who need scholarships. It is a nonprofit organization. Although Jay-Z is the creator and face of the organization, he has other help, including the CEO, who is his mom, Gloria Carter, and the executive director, Ms. Diaz. Rock Nation and Rock Nation Sports have both, are both examples of how Jay-Z has been able to develop his business profile and has expanded his potential revenue stream, marketing profile, as well as increasing the size of his fan base by expanding his name recognition. He has become a multifaceted inspiration to many rappers beneath him, such as Kanye West, and has exploded away from the competition within the past few Along years. Along with his numerous successful businesses, Jay-Z also takes time to give back to those less fortunate. The Sean Carter Foundation's main concept that the organization strives for is to enhance the future of our young people. The organization was created in 2002 and was created with the mission statement of to help individuals facing socioeconomic hardships further their education at higher levels. So far, the organization has been quite successful already providing $1.3 million to students at over 100 different, uh, different institutions. The organization also attempts to reach out to the community, helping out with Hurricane Sandy hit in 2002, uh, creating a 
alliance with the Food Bank of New York City to provide over 500 meals to those in need, and it also cre created a foundation uh, that creates a toy drive every year during the holiday season. Take the baseline out. I'm Jamie Carey. I'm Stephanie McKee, and we did leadership at JC. Jay-Z uses his expert power of rap to influence his audience and other artists. His audience listens to what he says in his songs, which influence them to follow their dreams, along with other artists who take from his music to make theirs better. Jay-Z also links up with other artists to help them to make music with him, to influence them with his knowledge and skills in the rap game. When meeting with Jay-Z, he uses referent powers when working with other artists to coach them in ways to make their music better and also coach them when they mess up. Jay-Z also has terminal values of personal commitments, of his personal commitments he makes to his, himself in relation to his life goals because he incorporates what he believes into his songs. This also relates to the iceberg metaphor where he shows on the outside his skills but on the inside is where his rap songs come from. Jay-Z had five aspects to that which led to him being a great leader. Number one being listen before you make a change. Basically meaning that you should try and figure out what the business is like before you go. Like don't just go in there and try and make a change right away. Number two being realize dreams, not promotion. You should try to, you, it is good to um, realize promotion, but also you should not only realize promotion, but also realize that you want to achieve greatness Number three being, live your brand. It, it'll help you make uh, more relatable to your audience if you live your brand because you're living it and not only are you trying to sell it, but you actually promote it. Number four being, be authentic. So be original because it'll help you relate not only to your brand, but also to your company, to the people that are trying, you're trying to reach out to. And number five, tell a story with your brand. It'll help you relate to people on a more personal level end up leading to better success in, in the end. I'm involved with our extension of being creative. You know, Rockaway is a clothing company. You know, it's part of who you are. My name is Phil McManaman. And I'm Emily Mazaris, and this is the culture of Jay-Z. Jay-Z grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and he um, got his musical influences from um, soul artists such as Marvin Gaye and Donny Hathaway. He first came into the record industry in 1996 for her his hip hop approach to music. He um, goes after the African American race and culture are his main influences, and he tries to fuse all cultures together. Um, he is also he calls himself the Picasso of his time because of his love for art. He represents a strong culture because of his self confident, committed, successful, and productive traits. He implements a uh, strong thug culture. His values of being determined and being the best and the greatest at what he does and his mission of going out and getting money really sets his culture. Uh, one of the lines in his songs of don't be good, be great, really shows that his culture is all about just being the best you can be. In fact, his ad agency, Rock Nation, went out, stole Robinson Cano from his agent and are now looking for the biggest deal in baseball history of $305 million. And his culture of hustling and being the greatest is one reason why Jay-Z will be on top for a long time. In reference to Hofstede's dimension of culture, Jay-Z represents a high power distance because he possesses a lot of power between him and individuals of society and also because of his celebrity status. He exemplifies low uncertainty avoidance because he is comfortable in taking risks and the uncertainty of changes of life have brought him to where he is at now in his life. Um, Jay-Z can be seen as a collectivist when it comes to his family because he is looking out for his wife and his child and is important to be considered part of his group of being a family. On the other hand, he can be seen as an individualist when it comes to his career because in order to be successful, you have to look out for yourself. Um, Jay-Z also des uh, demonstrates masculinity because he, of his numerous achievements in his career and acquisitions acquisition of money and material goods. For example, he is one of the most financial successful hip-hop artists and entrepreneurs in the world. According to Forbes for 2012, um, his net worth is 500 million. Jay-Z is long-term oriented since he has been in the business for 15 years. 
and to still continue to thrive as time Find some sort of truth in what you're doing. Like, yeah, I think just doing things that you believe in, you know, things that you understand. I think that's the best investment. Hi, I'm Stephanie Mejia, and I did the strategy part of our Jay-Z project. He was goal-oriented, and he had directional planning because everything was done strategically and for the long term, and it all was a chain reaction from one business to another, which made him very successful. In 2004, he bought a share of the New Jersey Nets, and in 2008, he moved from the Nets to the Brooklyn. Uh, in 2012, he was the executive producer for the NBA 2K13 soundtrack. He used his music and basketball experience to transfer that into the video game world for EA Sports. In 2013, he was a licensed sports agent. So once again, he used his basketball experience from his shares to now have another business, which was sports agent. He has growth in joint ventures. He partners with companies but does not endorse them. And he builds on partner companies, but he as well has his own. He has social, cultural, technological, and legal and tax environment. He's able to keep up with current trends, even though he's of an older generation. He keeps up with the younger generation. And he's a pioneer in the internet era. So a lot of the music that is sold online and on iTunes, but he's still a multi-selling platinum album artist. And he outsells his albums. He has a $150 million deal with Live Nation in 2008, and after the executives were fired, he turned it around and made the most out of the deal that they could never make. And he also sold Rockware for $200 million to iConnect, which was never appraised at that high value, but he made it, he got out of the business as soon as he could. A little over a year ago, I was in bondage. Now I'm back out here reaping the blessings and getting the benefits that go along with everything that's out here for kings like us.